Nick, what time is it? Uh, it is Adobe Office Hours time. That's right. It's time for Adobe Office Hours. Hey, everybody. Um, oh, how are we doing? How, Nick, how, how are we doing? I'm freaking out How right are now. we doing? Yes, Nick, <laughs> let's, let's ask another question here. And yes. that question would be, what day is today? Today is Friday. Yes. What number day is it? I believe it is Friday the 13th, isn't it? Is, it? It's Friday the 13th. Whoa. Uh, and as Friday the 13th happens, we are having the weirdest day here at Office Hours. It is just the weirdest day. So it feels on brand for us. So if there are some hiccups, if there are some weird things happening, if things look a little bit different, oh uh, grant us some grace because we are being yes. uh, we are being attacked. We forgot to align our crystals and Friday the 13th is making a comeback. Um, Nick, it hit us in every way. I just had literally everywhere. computer crash what a minute and a half before going on yes rebooted um i am house sitting and i have dogs that are screaming and all of a sudden fighting for the first time all day feels so, right welcome to office hours everybody. yes um <laughs> speaking of some uh kind of mix-ups in friday the 13th that are happening uh we talked about doing fresco we're not going to do fresco today we're going to stay in photoshop um just because we're having some weird times but we do have a great resource for you uh, and I'm going to go ahead and drop it in chat. Uh, and I think Wade might have the link as well. But it is an yeah. awesome coloring book. Um, and it's just a book of coloring book pages for you to work on, for you to create in, uh, for you to follow around. We may get into those today. We may not get into those today. Yeah. Uh, we'll see where we go. But there is a great resource. Uh, thank you. Wade just dropped that link for us. Uh, you guys can check that out and download those and play along. Uh, and what we want to see you do with those, Nick, where can they post them? That's going to be in our Discord channel. So That's right. right there below us, you've got the link. I uh, would love to see what, you're, what you guys can do with that. I was so surprised to see how much the, not only the coloring books showed up in research and everything for today's episode, but to see that Adobe actually did one with some great artists. Uh, we'll show you that, share that link as well. And you guys can see what you could do with their art and turning it into really cool coloring books. Yes, we are here for eternal amounts of art. And uh, check this out right here. And Boom. I'm going to take care of business. So give me one second. I there will you go. be right back. Nick's got it. <laughs> all right. So while Nick does that, uh, this is where I want you all to be. So right over here, join the Discord, right? Bit.ly slash OH Cabin Chat. Um, what I want you to do is go to that Discord right now. Um, click on that link that Wade just had. Grab those assets. And as you draw along, as you create something today, we're talking all about mental health. So grab those assets, um, download something, and then I want you to post it here in our Discord. So go to the homework channel, post it in the Discord as you work today. We'll be doing check-ins kind of as we go. Um, last week we talked about mental health and we're continuing that conversation today and talking about how art and Photoshop and Fresco can really be a great place for you to decompress, uh, to kind of do your art. So we're gonna be posting stuff on Discord as we go and hopefully you are designing along with us today uh, and having some fun. Yeah. Um, this should be fun. Yeah, we have a lot of familiar faces in chat. Nice to see you. Gareth is here. Gareth, you're a semi new, but also a regular now. So thanks for joining us. So fun. Um, yeah. And Elizabeth, hi. Yes, there is one from Lauren Hom, uh, which is the greatest. Nick, you've talked to Lauren a couple times, right, on your podcast? Yeah, we we got to interview her a few times, and then we um, we all got together at Adobe Max about two three years ago, right after her session. Uh, really, probably one of the most inspiring like business side people. Uh, and giving back person that you can see in the industry. Like, yes. It was really interesting stuff. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and yes, check it out. Okay, MVP of the day. Hold on, let's do this transition. For today's Star Camper. <laughs> check this out. Our friend Nick has already started doing some coloring pages. Great job, Nick. Uh, this is what today's all about. It's all about decompressing and all about just working on our mental health through having some fun and working in Photoshop and Fresco, wherever you're going to be. Um, we're having fun today and we're going to be uh, just hanging out. So, Nick, yeah. let's go yes. ahead and talk about something that's coming up before we jump into the show. Next week's a very, very special show. Like, probably the most special yes. show that we've ever had here on Adobe <laughs> Office Hours. Nick, what's happening? It's kind of like all the planets have aligned and Adobe, us, and our two favorite people, uh, Amy and Jen Hood are joining us for a really great conversation all about the business side of whatever you do, right? Yes. Um, it could be everything. They wrote such a fantastic book. Um, when they both came to my class uh, a few years ago and talked, it was really interesting to see how much um, people really react to uh, the knowledge and the stuff that they share. And that's what we hope we're going to get out of next week. So I can't yep. wait. Yeah. So it's, it's going to be fun. Blast. We're going to have good stories. So set a reminder, make sure you put it on your calendars. We'll be promoting it, set timers, whatever. Oh, here, let's do this one. Um, here. All right. Everyone turn up your speakers really loud real quick. Hold on. Alexa.
Alexa, set a reminder for tomorrow. <laughs> oh, it's yeah. not tomorrow, it's next week. I tried to do it. I missed it. Oh, <laughs> she's it. listening to me. Shh, quiet over there. Okay, all right. I My Alexa's yelling at me now. <laughs> See, you can't even, that's a, that's something where you just don't even want to go live. Can't do it. Come on. <laughs> we, we also have something very special coming up today. We have, actually, you know what? I'm not even going to say yet. I'm not even going to say it because ah. it's, it's so exciting and it's so much fun. Yeah. So let's go ahead and hop in, Nick. We have a lot of things to talk about today and then we're going to hop yeah. in. I'm going to show you a little bit of my process of how I like to mentally decompress. We're going to talk to a special guest about how they can decompress using art. Um, and yes, we love a good secret here. So Nick, yeah. let's hop in and talk about kind of the transition. Where were we last week? What do we talk about? And then yeah. how are we getting into this week? Yeah, so we talked last week a lot about all the ups and downs and the things that kind of trigger. Um, and I think if anything, just shared a lot of the great stories and seeing what you guys wrote, then seeing what you guys followed up with on Discord, it was really neat to see. And I think the one good takeaway from last week was no one's going through this by themselves, right? Everybody has some um, kind of some uh, form of this thing happening. And I think I mentioned it in Discord. I thought it was really interesting. We were at a family dinner later that night after uh, last week's. And it really, I brought the conversation up and I was so surprised at how open and cool people were talking about it, uh, even amongst at a dinner. So it's really neat that I think the part of that mystique has gone away. And um, hopefully we helped as well with putting this in the forefront for last weekend to this week. Yep. And last week, again, we gave a lot of insight. We actually had a therapist on. If you guys want to go back and watch that, if you've missed it, and if you're new here, you can yeah. go back and watch that in the replay. Um, but this week, we're going to kind of transition out of the idea of kind of opening the doors and talking about mental health and giving you some advice about how maybe art can help with your mental health. Um, it's been instrumental in my mental health over the pandemic. And uh, I do a personal project every year for my birthday, just as a mental health thing of something that I want to do that makes me happy and I just do it for my birthday. Yeah. Um, and yeah. so we're going to be talking a little bit about different ways and why art is important. Uh, and we're going to jump right in and start out talking through some art therapy. Nick, do you want to start us out? Yeah. And this is neat too, because how many times have you heard art therapy? I remember having an aunt who did it. And I remember even asking her as a kid, like, art therapy? What? I don't understand. You know, and when she broke it down and then doing some of this kind of research, even the last week, I was kind of so neat to think like, yes, this is the perfect follow up for this episode and to start showing you about what the benefits are. Here's some slides that we want to kind of show you. This will allow you to express yourself visually and rely less on the verbal expression. And I think that's a key thing to think about too, is by doing it in an expression that is visually, um, it's calmer, it's, it's more precise. I think it gives you a chance to kind of flow and get things out there, which is kind of cool. Verbal, we all know it's like, you know, there's that saying like, you know, before you say anything, think, you know, and I think with the, don't you agree with the visual side of this and creative and particularly just doodling or drawing? There's no filter. Yes. There's no fear, right? Yes. And That's I think what that, I love about this. Yeah, we've talked about this before with dealing with clients is that as creatives, we are just interpreters, right? We take things that we hear and emotions that we feel and then we interpret them into something that you can see. And so I think that that's kind of what art therapy is. And a lot of times, like, I don't have the words to express an emotion or a feeling, but I can see what that is. And so I'm yes. able to create something that allows me to, like, see what that is and kind of just get it out, um, yes. which is always really, really helpful. And, yes, there are people in chat saying, I hate talking. It It is hard <laughs> sometimes to communicate these very <laughs> complex ideas, but sometimes you can capture the feeling really well if you translate yes. it visually. Um, yes. Also, hello, Rick. Uh, I don't think I don't remember seeing Rick in chat before. So, hey, Rick. That hello, Rick. Uh, thanks for joining us. If you are watching on YouTube, <laughs> you're in the wrong place. Come over to Behance, behance.net slash live. Uh, leave us a red heart. Yeah, Y'all know yeah. the drill. So come over there. And that's where the chat Perfect. is. Um, and sorry, continuing on that, Nick, what do we got next? What are we talking about? Yeah, next well, year? think about it, too. It also helps you feel calm. It helps you feel a little bit more focused at the task at hand. And even um, can't share the stuff that we were going to show on the fresco because we were having a little technical difficulties on my end and I couldn't get my uh, iPad to look, but I'm going to show you a, a few things later on, just holding up the screen. This idea of like doing something therapeutic or with a rhythm while you're drawing can really do help you calm down and it helps you kind of put your mind at just that and take your mind off maybe the other stuff. That's the one thing I love about it. And then overall, it just can help assist with anxiety by proving your self esteem resolving any kind of problems, expressing your feelings, maybe even problem solving or goal setting. Yep. So this whole idea is really comforting, 
refreshing, a great thing to do. Maybe it's the number one thing to think about when the next time something triggers. And yep. this is, we all can do this, right? Absolutely, yeah. Piece of paper and pencil is all you need. Yep, and we're gonna get into this uh, later on, but I think all of this for me manifests itself mostly in like escapism. I love using art as like a mental sure. break to just like yeah. build my own world, leave the one that is here for a little while. If it's too stressful, exactly. if I'm overwhelmed, I can go and kind of create my own world into some escapism. Uh, and our special yeah. guest is going to talk about that as well. Uh, but we'll Perfect. get there eventually. So hopping in, Nick, I think that we have some ways that people can maybe engage and ideas to think about how they yes. can work on their mental health through art. Let's hop in and go through these. If you're taking notes, I love this. take notes. Yeah. If not, this entire deck is also uh, posted in our Discord, which you can join right over there. Bit.ly slash cabin chat. I would say... Don't even worry about taking notes. Do this Don't. exercise. For, we got do this in a minute. This is oh, the yes. simplest thing to do. This is something we should all do. I'd love to see you guys screen cap this or just take a picture of it and put Ooh, it in the homework. Do it now. Do it now. Do it now. Yes. yes. Do it now and love post it, post it in things. our Discord. All right, Nick. Can, can you tell we're teachers? Like this is like I. Anytime I can do something like this, that's a really great little brain uh, dump exercise like this. You got to do it. Let's yes. all do it together. All right, let's all do it together. Draw, Nick, go ahead. Yes, draw a large circle to represent your thought bubbles, everything that's inside your head, right? And what you wanna do is you wanna put all of the recent or current feelings, maybe even the past week or month or over this last few, this year, those things that got you feeling anxiety. What brought anxiety onto you? Put just these simple words. Here's a perfect thing, you know, money, work, parents, health, uh, sleep, whatever it is, put this in there, spend a minute, and draw out some of these things. I know I can I can definitely look at this and say work, probably technology, health, technology, o office hours. Right? Uh, yeah, news. Um, like what else? Like right? Like think about it. Even just maybe it might even be just like family conversations have changed over the year, the year, right? So like, what are those things that really trigger it for you? I would also say years ago, one of the things I had a huge anxiety about was flying. Like oh really. Oh my God, to the point I thought I was never going to go on a plane again. And the it was the only time I actually went and saw a therapist. We went through something like this and they did the same thing where it gave me the circle and I wrote in all the possible things that could possibly go wrong. And what the therapist did was almost like counteract all of those and tell me they're all falsities. Like they weren't real things to worry about when it comes to flying. And it was pretty interesting because it was my own thought bubble like this or brain dump that they were able to prove wrong. So it's really interesting. You know? That's awesome. I love this stuff. Okay, yeah. so where so, do we go from there? There you go. All right, so next up, you want to create a mind map and focus on one. Like, here's a perfect example. Let's focus on maybe sleep. Pick one that you guys really want to maybe tackle, and this next slide is going to help us get there. This is a great way to go through it. So we're picking that one that we really think is a good one to tackle. I know sometimes sleep could be a big thing. I'm sure you feel the same way too. Maybe that can keep you up at night or whatever. I'm sorry, so, what's uh, what's sleep? What's this subject what's you're talking yeah. about? I, I'm very unfamiliar. <laughs> I know. that's. I'd say that's probably my most uneven, like, I, I think I'm good with sleep, but I'm not. Like, you know what I mean? I'm not like, even close. I, Oh, I got you, man. Okay, so here's okay. what you're going to do, guys. Yes, what do you so do next? You've, you're going to look at these questions and start ant putting your own answers. So the questions are on the left, answers that I just wrote here, just as thought starters are going to be on the right. So whatever word you chose, what triggers that initial situation? So for me, I'd say it's too much work. It could be diet. It could be like lack of exercise. Why was I, why is sleep a big part? Why am I worried about sleep, right? So those are the things that can maybe initiate the idea. Then you look at what were the emotional feelings? I was sad. I was worried. I was stressed. I was even more stressed and maybe even more tired because you're not, you know, you're not sleeping. And then you look at physical feelings. Well, very sluggish, like very, maybe I'm procrastinating, things like that. But look at the negative thoughts. This is where you can kind of really start tackling it. Worried and anxiety, really anxiety comes in there. So a negative thought could be like, I'm, I'm not getting sleep. I'm not gonna perform better tomorrow at work or school or whatever it is. So look at the next one. Now you're gonna think about what are those things that you can calm this down with? What can you do that would be a technique? So do you use white noise? Do you use some kind of aromatherapy? Do you take a nap in the middle of the day? So you're forming the answers, kind of similar to what I said with that thought bubble when I was used it a long time ago. So now you have a few answers maybe or a few solutions to try next time before going through all of those, those emotions. Yep. Yeah, and you know? I, I love the idea of the calming techniques of just trying different things. 
Um, yes. I got in the habit of using white noise and I never used white noise when I slept uh, just because I sleep super hard, but I was having yeah. trouble falling asleep. And so I wanted to use it as a way to gauge if it took me more than an hour to go to sleep. So I have my oh, assistant, yeah. let's call her Becky. Uh, mm-hmm. So she doesn't start yelling at me again. Uh, yeah. And, and I, I'll be like, Becky, play, uh, play rain sounds is the one that I sleep to. And then that way I know if I hear it end, it's an hour. And so if I hear it end, I'm like, Oh man, I had a lot of trouble going to sleep last yes. night. Like what was going on? Or I'm like, cool. I have no idea when it ended. It put me to sleep and I was just out. Uh, and so I almost yeah. use it as a gauge, but it helps a lot. And it helps to calm me down that now every time I'm like feeling tired and kind of just laying in bed, I can roll over and say that. And then like that uh, phrase perfect. like triggers my brain to like calm down. Yes. It's time for bed. Yeah. I, I do like, like the fan sound. I know that's kind of considered white noise, right? Like it's just a constant, kind of tone that can maybe uh, keep your mind occupied, but not focused really on anything, you know, which it allows you to relax. So that's a really cool way to maybe think about it. So now you have those things down and you have some kind of solutions for the next time, maybe something like that could happen. Yep, absolutely. So moving out of that, right? Really, really great exercise to kind of work through. Uh, This is something that I love. I used to do this all the time uh, and I stopped doing it. And now that I'm looking at this, I'm just like, oh my gosh, when did I stop doing that? Yeah. Um, I loved this next thing. What is gratitude journaling? Wow. So do you do this? I used to. I used to do this all the time. I did this back in the day with, uh, has anybody ever listened or seen a Tony Robbins um, thing. Like to oh, yeah. me, that dude was everything back. Like I remember struggling through work and school and everything else and listening to his thing was, his number one thing was every morning you wake up and you first thing you do to set the foundation for that day is write down things that you are grateful for. So this idea of your gratitude journal, and this is, I did a quick image search. Guys, there's tons of these that are almost you don't even you know you just need a blank book really but i love like this example here that we're showing you it kind of shows you each day what are those things that happen and the whole idea here is that you're getting a certain point uh to start your day and you're writing down all of the things that you're grateful for this exercise builds momentum so every day maybe you find something new as opposed to what you wrote down yesterday but I remember doing this and it's those things you take for granted. It's so funny, right? It's like, it might be just the, the, the fact that you're employed, you have a house over your roof over your head, you are, you know, have great friends and family in your life. So yep. it could be as simple as that, but I, I love this idea. Yes. I, I, I think that, and it's good to have, um, a gauge to look back and yeah. be like, how was your week? Ooh, and you're like, good, how good was my it. week? Cause you can, you can very much feel like, your week was however that like whenever that person asks you, right? If someone asks you like, how was your week? I'll usually only think about like the last like 24 hours. Um, And so this is a great way to be like, how was my week actually? And looking back and be like, oh, this is a great week. I just had a bad like 24 hours. Um, And so it's, it's really great for kind of tracking mood and kind of where you're going. You could also see what's missing, right? If there's, if you're not writing a lot about a certain thing, you're like, oh, but I really want, security, I really want uh, wealth, I really want, or whatever it might be, right? Better health. And it's not showing up on your gratitude, then maybe you know there's something you should work on a little bit, right? Yep, so, and I love that idea. something else that we can do, uh, we do have those coloring pages, but there yes. is another kind of coloring that is really great. Um, wow, and I remember yeah. when this was like the hottest thing. What's the yeah. deal with mandala art? Mandala, look at this. I had no idea. I thought it was just art and fun and like it's particularly for people that maybe aren't the most creative it gives them a chance to create something put some colors down and make something beautiful right because it's based off of line art but what they found is that it helps the feelings of anxiety as they require a focused attention to not only create a pattern but there's this kind of rhythm movement as you're doing it right it's the way this is it's almost like there's the repeated paisley kind of pattern or whatever you want to call it and that concentration of keeping the pattern they find that people when without even instruction they know to do this in a certain order so like uh maybe they might do something where there's a radio gradient like it goes it goes with a color wheel or that same shape is the same color every time so what an interesting way to kind of take your mind off things 
take a mental like stress break and reduce all of those weird emotions by just doing something as simple as this. Yep, and when we talk a little bit, we'll talk um, about the idea of control, of like a lot of times if you're yes. feeling stressed, it feels like you're, you know, you don't have control of the world around you, all that kind of stuff, at least that's yeah. where I fall. Um, and yeah. anytime I've done coloring books like this, it is so good to have that precision, that it's just these tiny little things that you can focus in and everything else kind of goes away because you need to focus on that specific thing. Yeah. If you, if you want, I'll just show you this one really quick. If you go to my screen, I'll show you. This was one of the ones I found. Oh, yes. I just Let's found a really cool one here. And all I did was I saved it to the photo album. You know, I found it online. Someone yep. had a free one. And I think we have a link that we will share later. And all I did was I put it on a layer and I turned it to multiply. And then underneath it is my coloring layer. So that almost like makes it a PNG with like transparent white. And as you're doing it, your outlines are all still there up on front. Yep. And you can really just, I, and I got into it. I'm like sitting here already picking color palettes and everything. So it is, these things work. It's yep. really neat. And we'll be dropping a link to those. That'll be your bonus link. Uh, if you go over you into go. Discord, <laughs> we'll drop that link into Discord so you guys can get some awesome yeah. mandala art. Yeah. Um, all right. So What's let's, next? yeah, let's, let's kind of transition and talk a little bit about the idea of escapism. So a lot of times when I turn to art or design, or even if I'm streaming, uh, if you guys have ever seen on Behance, if I'm streaming, a lot of times I am streaming to decompress, uh, to kind of yes. just relax. It's something that allows me to translate my emotions. Um, and I love this idea of being able to create your own reality, right? There's a lot of times that yeah. I don't like the reality around me, uh, that it's stressful, that I'm not in control, that something bad is happening or someone is coming after me for something. Um, but I'm able to, oh boy, I'm able to create my own reality and almost tell everybody like, Hey guys, like, pause, like everything else stop. I'm going to go into my zone for a little while and then I'll come back to you eventually. Um, and so because we can make pretty much whatever we want, we can build that world. And so I know the world that makes me feel comfortable, kind of the zone that I love to be in. For me, yeah. I love to like escape back into like the 1940s and like I'm, you know, sitting outside of a party that's inside with a jazz band and I'm reading a book and I'm like out on the bayou and I just go into this like imaginary zone that I love that's kind of vintage that has all these things. Just in your kind of, imagination? Yeah, just in my imagination. Yeah. I, I mean, Perfect. if I could travel there, I would. Uh, take sure. me there, please. Uh, and so this <laughs> is the kind of zone that I like to create in, right? It's uh, a very kind of vintage title card is what I think of, of like an old classic movie, lots of glows, lots of shadow. To me, it just feels right, right? Or if I'm feeling really anxious, having something that's like really punchy uh, to me mm. allows me to have that grit and allows me to kind of play around with, uh, I don't know, a little bit of control, anger, chaos. It's like a controlled chaos. And I love being able to escape into that. So I'm going to show you how do to do some that, of that. I was going to say, do you find that that is a almost contrast it's it, there's some wonder in there that there's a contrast right there's like ones on one end ones on the other like controlled chaos yes like i love that yeah yes i love being able to and i think that it, again it's that idea that i feel chaos around me and so i want to be able to control it but then still yeah. have it be there and so i love having like the weird glows and the texture and all that stuff uh, to me nice. it just takes me back to a place to where there's a story and it's been around for a while. And I can almost like time travel in my brain. Uh, so I'm going to show you guys how to do a little bit of that as we hop into Photoshop. Uh, but I've, this is literally what I've been saying. If you feel out of control, create a world of control. Uh, go down to every last detail, every specific thing. Um, like we showed with the mandala art, sometimes if you're working in Fresco, if you're working in Photoshop, you can go pixel by pixel. Um, and something about that hyper focus for me allows me to kind of free my mind and Ooh. everything else goes away because I'm so focused on some kind of little detail. Yeah, I love that. I, I know I was joking earlier, but like I bought my first Lego thing back about a year ago that I, I did as a kid like crazy, right? I think every creative probably started in some way there. But have you seen the bonsai tree uh, no. one? Oh gosh, if you guys have not seen the Lego bonsai tree, it comes with, it, 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 it looks like it's in the lacquered little uh, tray and it has this beautiful uh bonsai tree that you can create all with legos and it is the most like you said it's like that therapy it brings me back to a time it's therapeutic you're totally enveloped in this thing uh wow i i didn't realize how much i missed uh building with those things it's crazy That's dope 
Um, yeah. So next up, translate your feelings into visuals. Uh, we talked about this. This is a great way to kind of express emotions. And I'm going to cut back here because I just remembered. Oh. I actually have a great example of this. Um, when I was working on Illustrator for iPad, um, I worked on a project that was basically um, trying to represent... Trying to represent uh, the feelings that I had when I was going through different uh, states of dealing with my bipolar. So this is the perfect like mental health and creativity. Uh, sure. Let me go back here. There we go. Uh, so I had a lot of story, but then I also had created these different pieces that represent the feelings that I'd have. And so uh, that's why I just talked about trying to get your feelings out onto paper. And so manic, right? A manic kind of feeling balanced is when I'm kind of existing uh. in this regular Zen zone. And then we have the depressive that everything is kind of just like pushing down on me. So I created these pieces really playing around, trying to figure out, um, uh, how to express these very complex emotions and feelings. And again, just threw stuff at the page until it felt right. It wasn't about any kind of actual design. It was about trying to find that feeling. Uh, and I think that that is a great way to kind of get art, get your mind right by just throwing yeah. stuff at a page. Yeah. And I, I, did you find with things like that too, where you, did you just go right into that art or were you just, did you have that idea in mind or how did that brain flow kind of start? Like, I really, I, just, I, cause I, right. Yeah. I really just wanted to, again, I was just trying to translate, uh, translate emotions, like translate yeah. the feeling onto something visual. Uh, and it started with like, okay, this feels right. Okay. What does this feeling feel like? Do those lines feel like that? Yeah, totally. Does this feel like that? Does it need more texture? It needs more texture. Um, and it sure. literally is just like, what is this making me feel? And is the visual feeling matching up with the physical feeling that I have? Um, and a lot of times it's just about, again, visually translating and trying to balance things. Very cool. Uh, okay. Let's go real quick. And okay, cool. Uh, so what we're going to do next, I'm actually really excited. We are going to get into Photoshop and I'm going to show you guys uh, a little bit of how I do my process, how I like to escape. But first, I want to talk uh, briefly to a very special person. It's one of our favorite people here on stream. And we do have uh, uh, here. You know what? This is going to be it. Our star camper. Uh, star camper number <laughs> two. two. For the, yeah, part two uh, is going to be someone that you all know and love. He's one of my favorite people, one of our favorite people, our moderator. Um, it's our buddy, uh, Wade Acuff. Let's bring Wade on the stream. Hi, Wade. <laughs> hey, everybody. Let's What's see if we can get it. There he is. Look, Look at that guy. Man, Andrew is the master of uh, technology and... Um, Streaming here. We're here. This was all set up like in two minutes. It's what true. A, what a feat. It's true. <laughs> um, so if you guys don't know, Wade is actually currently your moderator and usually the moderator here uh, on Office Hours. But Wade also does a ton of live streaming here on Behance and a ton of art. Uh, and Wade, do you want to describe kind of the art that you like to do? Um, and we're going to jump into some of your streams, but can you describe it? And then we'll show some stuff and then jump into a stream. Yeah, so just keeping on topic of what we're talking about today, um, a lot of times when I start a stream, uh, even if I have something in mind, I'm taking that time, uh, and you'll see it in the streams, I, I take that time to kind of just let the shapes speak to what I want to do, and then I slowly get into the theme. But when I'm doing it just for fun, it's it's a lot of the same process. Like, I really just start throwing things down on, on the you know on the screen, on the canvas, and see what comes up. And then like like the one that I think Andrew's showing right now, uh, there was a topic, it was clothing and we were doing a study of clothing. Uh, but I like to take, uh, for that one specifically, uh, I was taking the clothing study aspect of it, but also creating my own world so that I wasn't just copying, like I basically apply the study do like a hybrid model of just a, you know the escapism part of it. Yep. Um, and I mean that's a bit of that process, and that's that's how I start just doodling, and it really does help with, uh, especially with streaming. It helps with even if you have a, a little bit of anxiety about going live or anything like that, it's all gone. Like, yep. It it completely evaporates. And it's it's fun to collaborate with you. And again, this is something that I love about Behance is that we can 
really share our process and create stuff together. And again, this is going to be a plug for our, uh, there we go, giant Wade back, uh, for <laughs> the Discord. It's a great place to get connected. And I love watching Wade streams because we can kind of collaborate and just like I get immersed in your worlds that you're creating. Um, and I was watching a stream the other day and you kind of just go in and let your brain go where it goes, right? Um, oh, is that yeah. something that, yeah, like, yeah. when you get ready to stream, are you getting into, like, a mental zone of, like, oh, man, this is going to be my special time to just, like, decompress, to, like, experiment, to have fun with art? Is that kind of how you go in? Yeah, definitely on uh, streams where, like, um, if I know that, uh, I know that I'm just, I've really been just turning my wheels on something or something's been, you know, in the background, I kind of just let all that go and just see where the shapes take me. And then, you know, I'll ask chat what they want to do and, you know, kind of just fold that into what I'm working on. Yeah. Uh, I just let, you know, kind of just ease into what is happening uh, on the screen and just kind of, you know, find the shapes. It's really just mark making. Like I could just start scribbling and if, oh, look, there's a, you know, a face starts to emerge then I go with it. If it doesn't yeah. work out, I completely scrap it and I start again. That's cool. Do you That's feel cool. like when you sharing this has helped you not only as an artist, but let's say calming anxiety, feeling more comfortable doing this in front of people and, and, and not worried so much? Absolutely. Like, I mean, I, I it started with, uh, I used to, I still do, I guess we can't now because of, you know, current conditions, but uh, I used to table at conventions and drawing in front of people, uh, was not something I was very familiar with. This all kind of like uh, definitely helps with that. Not that I've gotten over that a little bit anyway, but being live is a little bit different. Um, but it, it all helps. Like it all just kind of helps to say, one, you've done it before, but you know you can do it again. That's a huge confidence boost. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, just kind of go with it. it. Even in, you know, if there's a big spotlight on you, you can relax and say, I'm just doing the work. I'm just doing the work, you know, just letting your mind go. Yep. Yeah. And I, again, I love getting the uh, residual effects of seeing things like this to where it's this underwater fantasy world. Uh, it, again, talking about that escapism, it just pulls me out and lets me like exist. Like I'm in a submarine, I'm a scuba diver living in your world that you've created uh, for us. So Thanks for creating for us, uh, Wade. And uh, people, all the people's in chats, uh, our moderator's gonna drop a link for us to Wade's, <laughs> to, to Wade's Behance. Come on it. Come uh, on you, it. you can go ahead and uh, subscribe. There is a new subscribe feature here on Behance so you can uh, support Wade and uh, his work, also get some cool stuff from him. Uh, but go give a follow, uh, love yeah. on Wade, watch some of his streams. He's one of our favorites here on the show. Uh, so you, Wade. You know, he's, you know he's part of the family, right? Because look behind him. It's true. He has a wall. He has a wall mounted to the rescue. It's true. Yeah. It's it's that's how I get a, that's how we get a hold of our moderators here. We use those. You thought they were just for a show, but no, that's how we. A that's how we get scene line. secret. Yeah. Yep. It's a hotline. Yep. Hotline there straight to Wade. Uh, so thanks for joining us on the show today, Wade. Uh, we'll see you later, and uh, yeah, have uh, fun streaming, and everyone go follow uh, and watch that stream. Uh, and we're gonna go ahead and hop in to some Photoshop because we promised that we okay. would talk about it. We promised that we'd do it, so we're gonna hop into Photoshop. Um, and I'm going to show you kind of my process for how I decompress if I'm working in Photoshop. Um, oh, this is Wade. Hold on. Let's turn Wade off. Here we go. I got it. Wait, I got it. There we go. There's the button. Got it. Bye, Wade. Um, so, so, Nick, looking yes. at this screen, does this screen induce stress? Uh, not on a not not on a screen. A, maybe a nice piece of paper or a canvas. It would. That's true. But actually. I, 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 I think the thing about um, the, the screen that doesn't intimidate anymore is it's so temporary. It's it's virtual. It's not real at the beginning. Yep. So have fun with it, right? Yep, absolutely. Yeah. So what I'm feeling right now, let's channel my emotions. We're going to get in do some mental exercise. And again, uh, and if you guys want to design along with us, if you want to create something, um, try to think about what's what's happening, how do you feel right now? What's happened in the week? What's happening in this weekend? For me, I'm about to get away actually uh, tonight. I'm doing a little getaway um, and I'm really excited for that. It's been a crazy few weeks, so I'm gonna take some time, mentally decompress. And so my brain is kind of in this zone of 
uh, almost like just turning the lights out. Like I'm just d- kind of dimming the lights down a little bit. Um, All right. And so we're going to create something that is vintage title card that is my happy place, brings me lots of texture. Um, and what I love to do is cross-reference with something else that I feel like inspires me. So we're going to use a quote. Uh, and the quote is going to be, one day I'll fly away. Uh, and it's from Moulin Rouge, which is one of my favorite things in the world. Uh, so we're just going to create a title card that says, one day I'll fly away. Um, and chat, if you have questions as we do this or comments yeah, or just want to talk about yours, pop it in. Uh, Nick will be watching because I'm going to be yeah. pretty intently looking at the screen. So what I like to do, right, if we're thinking about translating, I want it to be kind of that like... Uh, decompressing i'm kind of just in a dark room maybe watching tv and it's just an old movie so i'm gonna make everything super dark and then kind of figure out where to go from there so what i like to do is i'll start with a new layer and i'll just make it so that these uh colors are black and white Uh, and my secret is that i never go all the way black and white you always want to go a little bit gray and a little bit uh, a little bit pulled in because no TV is able of pushing out that full white or that full black. It's always like that little faded gray. So that's the secret yeah. for me. Uh, and I'm going to go here to filter. I'm going to fill this real quick and go to filter, uh, render, and just do difference clouds. So this is how I start to get that background texture. Right? You can see that it's starting to get a little bit of that like, ooh, to it. Um, yeah. From there, what we're going to do, uh, let's do this. Let's actually just duplicate this. And then I'm going to rotate it. Woo. Mm. And then use multiply. And I know that multiply always makes Ooh. things darker, right? So now we're starting to get a little bit of that multiply looking good, right? Getting that background. And I'm trying to get um, almost like I'm looking down at a table, right? Okay. So what I do is I, I use these blend modes a lot. Um, is it going to work? It's not going to work if I do this. Let's see. It did. Uh, so I went ahead and merged those down, and it basically just merged those together. And now I'm going to start bringing on the noise. And you guys will see this a million times. I'm just going to throw noise at this. Um, something about the noise to me takes me back into a happy place of watching an old movie, of you know something yeah. that feels like when I was growing up, my mom would have me watch old movies. I grew up on It's a Wonderful Life and The Mr. Ed Show and Leave it to Beaver. So I grew up on black and white kind of vintage movies. And so for some reason, uh, this vibe kind of just brings me back to a happy place. So Very cool. we're going to add a noise. And uh, if you guys can see, you can see that it's giving a lot of that noise in the background. And that's what I want. I want it to feel very textured um, and very kind of, uh, I don't know, almost spooky, grainy. Bring on the punk. Yes. Yeah, I know. That was great. <laughs> Bring on the noise. <laughs> so something that uh, I said, and let's see if anybody picks or Nick, if you know about Yo. this. Uh, okay. So I've said this a couple times on stream before that if I want something to look older, right? The problem is I can do as much as I want in Photoshop, but it always looks too real. How, how do I make it look less real? I think we've done this a couple times in my process. Oh God. Do you add a little blur? Yes. So everything that I do, uh, pretty much every step I'll go up here and I'll go filter blur and then blur it out just a little bit. I'm actually going to zoom in so you guys can see. So you can see how crisp this is here. So I'm going to go ahead and blur this by like that's way too much. So I'm going to blur this by like 0.5, just a tiny little Perfect. blur. Um, and I'll undo. So you can see there that it feels soft. And then here it's too sharp. So I want it to be a little bit softer there. Um, and yes, someone is saying dissolve. We are going to use dissolve. Yeah. All right. So we, we've got this here. And let's go ahead and put our quote in first. Uh, so I'm just going to drop some type in here. Uh, and also, sorry, quick uh, reference. If you guys want to, again, post right here in the homework uh, channel. Yeah. Is anyone posting on summer camp? Uh, cool. Yes, Ooh, post in nice. homework if you are doing anything and designing along with us. Uh, and so I'm just going to type out my type. And as I do that, Nick, what's your zone for like if you're just having fun and kind of decompressing with art? Oh, I'd like to take it outside, actually, to be honest with you. And I think the iPad and or even just a sketchbook are a great way to do it because if you're really gonna do it like for me it's about technically i'd hate to say it but 80 percent of my stress comes from something that is on a screen (laughs) to begin with so (laughs) if i really want to do it right uh i'll walk away i love outside i love this time of the year i love hearing even if it's taking taking your ipad or something to the park or doing something kind of different that's kind of the zone i i tend to like love to be in but when it comes to drawing or painting i i think um, I would take the just as much of an opposite and actually try to do something with paint or with charcoal or something else, again, to be uh, anti-computer. 
you know? Wow. I get so stressed when I'm not in something that I'm familiar with. Um, and I'm very familiar with Photoshop. And so when I yeah. like, need paper or need to draw something, I just like freak out. My brain is like, what's going That's on? That's a great point. Cause I've noticed this a few times where being stressful or coming back from maybe a meeting or whatever, I'm almost like anticipating getting behind the screen. Yep. I know what you mean. That that is that that is where I think most of us live throughout our day. Um, and there is that that could be your happy place. You're yep. right. And somebody, uh, our friend Tunk in uh, chat, just talked about Dissolve. I'm going to show you how to use Dissolve because that is another one of my all time uh, go tos. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to create a new layer here uh, by clicking on the little plus. And I'm gonna grab a brush, and I'm gonna make sure that this brush is very, very soft. So it's gonna, I'm gonna kind of blur it out a lot. Yes. Um, we'll go soft around here and kind of see where that is. That's good. And I'm just gonna make it gigantic. And what I'm gonna do is I want to have kind of a focus around the edges uh, and give it a little bit of a blur. So you can see here as I blur out these edges, it's giving it uh, that kind of vignette, right? Um, and am I more comfortable in Photoshop or Illustrator? Um, either Ooh, I, I really you you feel equal yeah i think so oh wow i'm so much more illustrator because i i used to i used to do photography uh and i i mean still every now and then but i used to do photography sure. so i spent a lot of time in photoshop and photoshop is how i do all of my texture work um yeah and so i stay in chat, here a lot where are you chat give us your comfort oh, yeah. zone ai or ps uh, so chat, let's you can see, see as I put this in here, you can see that it's actually giving me this really cool stipple effect. Uh, and that's Ooh, what yeah. Dissolve does is it saves me from having to do another layer of noise. I can kind of just come in here and put in the edges that I want and put in just enough to have that nice little vignette around the edge. And maybe I want it to be... It's also making it more random. It, as, as messy as it first started, it was very uniform. And I think flipping your um, clouds was a great way to turn it into something a little bit more abstract, yep. you know? Absolutely. Uh, but look at that. That looks great. Yeah. So we're starting to get there. And again, we're going to have to do the thing to where it's too crispy. Um, so I'm going to go in here and you can see the pixels here and like nobody wants yeah. to see pixels. Uh, and so what you can do if you have a layer set to dissolve, if you merge that layer down with a blank Ooh, layer, yes. it keeps the dissolve, right? So right now, if I try to change the blend mode to multiply, it's not going to keep that dissolve. So we're going to dissolve and then we're going to click on this layer right here. And we're gonna hit Control or Command E, and that will merge it down. And now you can see Beautiful. that it still has that, but it's kept our blending mode. So I can bring this blending mode to multiply to really let it interact with those edges. I love the live blend mode preview as you scroll down. Yes. I, I wish that was in Illustrator too, because it's so neat to see before you've even like committed yep. what it's gonna look like. Look Absolutely. at that. Look at all those effects. It's pretty incredible. Yep. Uh, and again, we're gonna do the same thing that we just did. You can see I don't want to see pixels here. Um, and so I'm actually going to go to 0.4. So I never go less than 0.4 because if we do, you can still see pixels. And sure. so I keep it at 0.4 to keep it nice and kind of, mm. uh, ooh, right? It's looking ominous. Yeah. That's what we want. It is. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to start playing with light. Uh, and we're going to play with the type and give it some shadows. Um, Nick, have you? I think that you've shown us before how to do long shadows in Illustrator, right? Have oh, we done yeah. anything with the, long shadows? How do you do your long shadows? So I will do it with a 3D effect in Illustrator. Um, and that's a quick way to do it. It can extrude to however you want. You turn the the 3D cube to exactly where you want it to be. Yep. Um, that's a great way to do it. Here, I think on, on Photoshop, you got multiple ways for sure. There are, and I do mine in the worst, most taxing possible way. So here's how I do my long shadows is I'll go to write my type here and I'll control click to make a selection of that type. Then I'll make a yes. new layer. Oh, you guys can't see my layer panel here. Let's do this. Excuse me. No, no, let's not do that. Let's just bring layers all the way up here. There we go. You guys can see it now. There we go. So what I'll do is I will uh, make a new layer underneath my type. I will grab my lasso tool hitting L and make sure my background color is set to black. And then I'll hit control backspace. And what that's going to do is it's going to fill it with the background color. So it's filling with black. And then, and then <laughs> I'll go to the right one and down one and then hit control backspace again. And what I'm doing is I'm literally moving one pixel over and one pixel down and then filling with black. And I just do that on repeat. 
and it makes oh. it so that there's basically a shadow going on that side. And it Ooh. literally takes forever and is probably the worst way to do it, but I really like the way you that like it makes it look. I love the effect. Um, and so I then, think it has a more natural um, and everything you're going for, the old effect, yes. the grainy effect, the less digital, the less constructed way. It feels like it's building it almost like haphazardly a little bit. Yes, yep. And then what I'll do is I'm going to select all of that shadow that I had. And if you think about it, I'm giving dimension to the letters, but then I want yes. light to hit it and cast a shadow. So I'm going to do another long shadow going the opposite direction. So we'll just make a new layer there and I'll grab control and click to grab all of that shadow I just made. And then again, just grab my lasso tool and control backspace or command backspace and go the opposite way, down and left. And this one is usually much longer when I put it in. Mm -hmm. Ooh, nice. Mm, a little bit more. This is feeling like the, it feels like that first slide you see of credits on something very much like you described at the beginning, some movie, yes. black and white, something really old. That's what I want it to be. Uh, so then I'll change the blend mode to multiply and then probably take the opacity down a little bit. And you can see how much dimension that just gave it. It just gave it that really, really nice dimension. And I could blur it out a little bit and I probably should, but I'm not going to. Um, and you can see now it's starting to look like it's 3D, have that nice little shadow. Uh, so we're getting there, we're getting there. And what I wanna do next is I'm actually gonna start using like the Photoshop capabilities um, of playing with light. So what I want is I want there to be a glow. If I'm looking at my shadows, right, my light is going to have to be up in this area, right, coming yeah. down this way. There you go. So I'm going to grab my lasso tool, and I'm just going to feather it to, like, 300 pixels, and then think about where I want that light to hit. And I want it kind of diagonal coming across here, coming from that corner. So let's pull it up in that corner just a little bit. And with this selected, I'm going to come up to the top here, and I am going to add an adjustment layer of curves. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna grab that piece that I just had, right? That selection that I had. And then I'm going to augment these curves. Let me move this up here so y'all can see it. There we go. Augment these curves to add a little bit of light. And you can see, right, that it's starting to give me that glow right there, Ooh. like Photoshop does so well. And yeah. it's starting to give us exactly what we want. And even you can see the flicker. Uh, you can play around with that in animation, but you can see that little flicker happening there. So that's looking oh. good. All you need is some of those like film reel things that like, you know, the because that flickering adds everything to it. It yes. tells you exactly what it should be. Absolutely. And so I'm going to add actually one more highlight there. Um, and I'm just going to grab a little bit of highlight in this corner and add another adjustment layer. And again, curves are basically just playing with light. So I can add more light, take light away. And here it just feels like it's giving me a little bit more of that glow from the edge that I want. The lighting so, controls are just so incredible. Yes, right? Uh, so that's looking good to me. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to merge everything down. Uh, and the way to do that is Control-Shift-Command-E. So all of the modifiers <laughs> under E. Yeah. And it's going to basically make a copy. So you can see that if I turn all these layers off, it's made a copy and basically just merged a JPEG on top. Um, and what I love to do here is, again, just add in some noise on top over the whole thing that will help to kind of even it out a little bit. And then we're going to, again, add a little bit of blur and then we'll add one more effect and call it done. It's so, like a great diffusion. It really does have that effect on all of it, which is really uniform. Yep. So Good. sometimes if you add the blur on, you want to add more noise on top, which is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add another 10. No, oh, let's add in like eight. Yeah. Cool. There we go. So it's added that right, nice little glow and nice and soft. So here's what I'm going to do is I'm going to make one more layer on top and I'm going to make it uh, this white color. And we're going to set it to dissolve again right here. And I'm just going to go over some of these letters. So I'm going to make sure I have a super soft brush. And I'm just going to kind of click on these letters. Ooh, just to give them some unevenness maybe? Is that what you're trying to do? Oh, I am not using the right tool. Uh, so what I'm what I'm gonna do is I'm basically going to use this um, to allow these to glow a little bit because I mm. want it to have that kind of uh, overglow, right? Like the TV isn't calibrated correctly, and so I literally just click on those and then I'll merge it down again with that dissolve, merge into a layer, Control E, and then change it to overlay or even soft light. 
Let's do oh, overlay, yeah. right? And it just gives it a little bit of that glow. So it looks like those letters are kind of glowing off the page a little bit. Um, well, I think that's the neat thing too. They wouldn't be completely equally lit, right? There's going to be some, some differences there, yep. which I love. Yeah. And I'm going to crop it into a square just because I think it's going to look way better. Nice. Um, and there we go. This is something that I would create to kind of mentally decompress for the day. Um, now you're ready. Now I'm ready. And then I can go in and think, <laughs> okay, does this feel like... Uh, what I want. Like, I want it to be hopeful, but then also, like, it's coming out of this darkness, right? It's kind of representing my week. Uh, so as I look at this, right, it's all about uh, trying to interpret. And so I think, okay, there's not enough of that idea of, like, coming out of a darkness. And so I would just come in here and probably brush in around Ooh, this edge vignette. a little bit. Yeah, yeah just a little vignette. Um, and then I'll probably... Yeah, let's do that. So now it's a little bit darker. Um, and then again, we're gonna blur it out just a little bit. Yeah, that's going somewhere. Uh, nice. So that feels a little bit better to me uh, to kind of get the emotion that I want. But again, it's all about playing. Uh, and Wade was talking about this. And Nick, does this ever happen to you where you work on something like this and then you just get stuck in the details and you're like, I should have oh, been done yeah. with this. Or when is when is it done? When is it ready? When yes. is it enough? <laughs> yes. Can never can never set. Here? Especially if it's a something like this that you're doing just for yourself. You'd think that would be the one that you would be a little less judgmental on. You know? It's yes. funny. All right, we'll call it yeah. a day there. A fun uh, exercise for sure. Yes. So super fun. Looks great. Uh, and this is kind of my zone of decompressing uh, for the day. Uh, let's take a look at Discord. Is anybody? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right. Let's yeah. look over at Discord. Uh, <laughs> what do we got? Elizabeth. Oh, it's so nice. fun. Great colors. Those are Love fantastic it. colors. That looks great. Good stuff. Great job. And then we have uh, Nick is over here painting with some custom brushes mm. in Fresco. Yes, Fresco is uh, – and actually, this is probably a conversation for you, Nick. So – I love working in Photoshop because I don't like the physicality of like feeling or drawing things. Drawing, yes. I, I like to like piece things together more so in my process. And so I yeah. like working in Photoshop because it feels like I'm just kind of moving things. Do you like to have that hands-on kind of drawing kind of zone or would you rather yeah, be on a computer? Oh gosh. It's probably like a 50, 50 thing because I think that's what I like about using Fresco so much is it has all of the added components and the things that you love about the digital computer and what it can do. But then you have that natural feeling of pen to screen that is so great. Like it's the missing, to me, it's the missing. I don't use a tablet with the computer. Uh, I can't wait till the Mac is basically literally an iPad that runs Mac software. Oh, that I'm so will stressed. Be the day. That that's why I day. have a PC. Um, yeah, I know. There you go. <laughs> so, uh, thanks for joining us today. Hopefully you all had a great time. Hopefully you learned something. I love sharing my secrets. Yeah. Um, please, if you want to go back, watch the stream, copy my style, make the exact same thing, uh, do it, learn something new. And hopefully you can take those pieces into something that you're creating. You can use the textures, you can use the blurs, um, but literally go back and try to take those ideas that I had of using darkness, using light, using texture to convey those emotions and see what you can create or download the, uh, coloring pages that Wade is going to drop into chat uh and nick what's coming up next week we got the hood sisters we got the hood it's be sisters. a great one talking all about business can't yes. wait to uh dive into that one man we're gonna have it, a blast yes it's gonna be so much fun we're gonna talk all about business next week um what time where what are all the details nick every friday guys 2 30 p.m pacific time behance.net slash live you're here already don't watch it on youtube watch it on behance yes. have questions ready that's gonna be so i know a lot of it comes oh. in the moment like any questions for next week, be yes. ready. And any questions for next week, drop them into the homework channel right here. So in Discord, go to Discord. If you have any questions for Amy and Jen Hood about business, about their careers, about anything, we'll be interviewing them live on the show next week. Um, and make sure that you are putting your questions in chat yes. or in here in Discord before the fact so we can kind of prep them. Um, so thanks so much for joining us today. And it's 1.30 a.m. Thanks so much for hanging out today. Oh, thanks, Man, bud. that's awesome. Appreciate that. Uh, and we will see you next week for another episode with the Hood Sisters uh, of Adobe Office Hours. Bye, everybody. Namaste. Namaste. <laughs>